These will be the content of this report about feed forward control. Block diagram. Design of FFC controllers. Examples, and lastly, applications. Why feed forward? Advantages of feedback control corrective action is independent of sources of disturbances. No knowledge of process is required. Versatile and robust. For disadvantages. No corrective action until disturbance has affected the output. Perfect control is impossible. Nothing can be done about known process disturbance. If disturbances occur at a frequency comparable to the settling time of the process, then process may never settle down. Here is the block diagram for a feedforward control. Feedforward control. Advantages. Corrective action is taken as soon as disturbances arrives. Controlled variable need not be measured. Does not affect the stability of the processes. For disadvantages, load variable must be measured. A process model is required. Lastly, errors in modeling can result in poor control. These are examples of a feedback control, feedforward control, and combined feedforward and feedback control. These are design procedures and block diagram method of a feedforward control. This is the derivation. Examples. For example number 1. Let GP of S is equal to KP over tau PS plus 1 and GL of S is equal to KL over tau LS plus 1. Then, GF of S is equal to negative KL over KP times tau PS plus 1 over tau LS plus 1. Therefore, feedforward controller is a lead lag unit. For example number 2. Let GP of S is equal to KPE minus DPS over tau PS plus 1 and GL of S is equal to KLE minus DLS over tau LS plus 1. Then, GF of S is equal to negative KL over KP times tau PS plus 1 over tau LS plus 1 times E times negative DL plus DP times S. If negative DL plus DP is positive, then this controller is unrealizable. However, an approximation would be to neglect the delay terms, and readjusting the time constants. In this case, perfect feedforward compensation is impossible. Tuning feedforward controllers. Let GF of S is equal to K multiplied by tau 1S plus 1 over tau 2S plus 1. This has three adjustable constants. K, tau 1, and tau 2. Tuning K, K is selected so that for a persistent disturbance, there is no steady state error in output. Adjusting tau 1, tau 2 can be obtained from transfer functions. Fine-tune tau 1, tau 2 such that for a step disturbance, the response is somewhat symmetrical about the set point. This is an example of a simulated disturbed plant. Here is the simulated block diagram. Here is a comparison of feed forward and feedback control. Another example. Distillation column. Mass balance. F is equal to D plus B. F Z is equal to D Y plus B X D is equal to F times Z minus X over Y minus X. In practice, D is equal to F times Z minus X set all over Y set minus X set. For example, if light key increase in feed, distillate rate will increase. Design of feed forward control using material and energy balances. Consider the here exchanger energy balance yields Q is equal to WC times T2 minus T1 equals to WS lambda. Where lambda is equal to here of vaporization WS equals to WC times T2 minus T1 over lambda. This equation tells us the current stream demand based on 1, current flow rate W. 2, current inlet temperature T1. 3, desired value of outlet temperature T2. Control law and design. Note no dynamics are incorporated. When to use feed forward. First, feedback control is unsatisfactory. Second, disturbance can be measured and compensated for. Third, frequency of disturbance variations are comparable to frequency of oscillation of the system. Fourth, output variable cannot be measured. Lastly, there are large time delays in the system.
The next topic is model-based PID controller tuning method, or also called lambda tuning. Lambda tuning is the universal method for PID controllers in process control. It gives non-oscillatory response with the response time required by the plant. Seven industrial examples show the relevance and simplicity of this method. Will lambda tuning work in your process control loop? PID, proportional plus integral plus derivative, is by far the most common feedback control algorithm in the process industries. Many control engineers are asked to choose the P, I, and D controller tuning parameters. Often we are faced with one or more of these six common challenges. Given these challenges, what is a systematic and practical way to find the optimal parameters? Don't confuse yourself with arcane statistics. Use your knowledge of the plant. Start with the purpose of the loop, possible interactions with other loops, and the ability of the process to respond to the controller. For example, there are practically no control loops in the process industries whose purpose is to oscillate. To comply with the production objectives of the plant, and to prevent interactions between loops, most loops need to respond in a certain amount of time. Learning which loops need to be fast and which need to be slow will make your tuning efforts more valuable to the plant. Finally, the process dynamics will limit how fast you can make the closed loop response. Here is the basic feedback control loop. Lambda tuning has proven successful in thousands of control loops covering the following process control applications. Feedback control loops in continuous and batch processes. PID controllers of all types. DCS. PLC single loop, pneumatic, from all manufacturers. Physical processes including flow, pressure, level, temperature, and composition. Process industries including chemicals, refining, oil and gas, power, life sciences, pulp and paper, metals and mining, and pipeline. The environments of brownfield plant optimization, greenfield plant startup, design and simulation of control systems, and education. Lambda tuning is a model-based method related to internal model control and model predictive control. The math behind it uses pole zero cancellation to achieve the desired closed loop response. However, to apply the method you need only simple arithmetic. As in figure 2. If your process dynamics fit any of the following models. A. First order. B. Integrator. C. Integrator. First order lag. D. Integrator. First order lead. E. Integrator. Non-minimum phase. F. Second order. Overdamped. G. Second order. Underdamped. H. Second order. Lead. I. Second order. Lead with overshoot. J. Second order. Non-minimum phase. Each process model includes dead time. Types A and F to J are self-regulating. That is, for an output step, the PV eventually settles at a new value. The process dynamics model is typically identified from step testing in manual mode. Step tests also help to identify the nonlinearities in the process response, such as dead band and control valves, which may be a greater problem than the as-found controller tuning. We assume the controller block in figure 1 contains a PID algorithm. The process block includes the final control element or slave loop, the process to be controlled and the sensor or transmitter. Lambda tuning gives a non-oscillatory response to setpoint changes and load disturbances. You choose the response time lambda to fit the control strategy and the unit production objectives. Most of the processes in your plant will fit either the first order model or the integrator model. First order process dynamics. It is when the process has the following self-regulating open loop response. Integrator process dynamics. It is when the process has the following integrating open loop response. Process plant examples. Closed loop flow rate control of natural gas liquids through a control valve into a depropanizer column. The PID controller executes an ADCS. 
The process model is self-regulating first order plus dead time. The dead time, occurring both in open loop and closed loop, is mostly due to nonlinearity in the response of the control valve. Level control in an oil field produced water treatment tank. The PID executes in APLC with output going to a variable speed pump on the inflow piping. The outflow is controlled by a separate pump which establishes the load on the level loop. The process model is integrator. Dissolved oxygen control in a 2-liter bioreactor. The PV is measured as percent saturation of the solution. Output of the DO controller goes to a slave flow loop that sparges oxygen into the bioreactor and is tuned for lambda equals to 20 seconds. CO2 flows into the reactor to control the pH. However, it also tends to displace the O2, making CO2 the load variable. The process model is integrator. The PID controller executes in ADCS. Reactor pressure control in the gasoline hydrotreator unit of a refinery. The PID controller executes in ADCS with standard structure, and output goes to a control valve on the outlet of the reactor. The process model is integrator. Level control of natural gas liquids in the surge tank that supplies a depropanizer column. The level controller output cascades to a slave flow loop on the surge tank outlet, which we have already seen in figure 3 with lambda equals to 10. The load is the inflow to the tank. The process model is integrator. The PID control executes in ADCS. We have illustrated lambda tuning in several different process plants with various types of PID controllers and various control objectives. In each case, we achieved a smooth response with the appropriate response time lambda ranging from 0.6 to 3000 seconds. The method accounts for the ability of the process to respond to the controller, the purpose of the loop, and interactions with other loops. To our initial question, will lambda tuning work in your process control loop? You should now be able to answer, yes. The most important user requirement is to choose the response time according to the unit objectives and the process constraints. The math is simple. Training and tools are available. But if you want an oscillatory response or an arbitrary response time, you will need to find a different method.